Hey guys, it's MJ, the Students at Tree, and in this audio talk, we're going to be looking at subject CT2, chapter 4, and we're going to be focusing on loan capital. So in the previous talk, I focused on share capital, um, so take a listen to that, but if you just want to learn more about loan capital, you've come to the right place. The whole idea with the loan is something a lot of us are familiar with. Uh, let's say I want to buy a house. Houses cost a lot of money. I don't necessarily have, um, you know, let's say a million dollars in my pocket to just go buy a house. But what I do have is I've got a nice job and it is paying me out a steady income stream. So what I do is I go to the bank and I say, please give me the million rand now. And I have the salary of the salary. I will pay you so much interest um, for the next 10, 30 years or something like that. The bank says, okay, we agree to this. We're going to give you the $1 million um, dollars to buy your house in exchange for interest payments throughout a certain period of time. And that's what a loan is. You're getting liquidity now in exchange for paying interest rates. And the idea is that if you look at all the payment rates that you make, it is significantly higher than the amount you initially borrowed. So if you have a lot of money, you don't need to borrow more money because you're paying for that money. You're paying for the usage of it. And what we're going to see with companies is that they've got two options. They can either sell shares and equity, but they might not be be too keen to do that because that means they're giving away voting rights, they're giving away, um, you know, if the company does really well in 10 years' time, they've sold it at such a cheap price. There's a lot of reasons against equity. And so there is the second option known as loan capital, in which case they go to a creditor, which is either a bank or a very wealthy individual, or it could be a bunch of other people, and they say, give me a lot of money now, and I will give you interest payments throughout a course of a term. With loan capital, we have something called a debenture. Now, the debenture is the most secure type of loan in the sense that, um, if we go back to our example, the bank says, here's $1 million to buy your house. If you don't make your interest payments, we're going to come and we're going to take that house away from you. And we're going to take that house and we're going to sell it on the market and get our money back. Because the loan is backed by an asset, there is significantly less risk for the bank. So they charge you a much lower interest rate. They're still going to charge you an interest rate that is quite high in the sense that there's a lot of effort involved in trying to take that house and selling it. And you know they might not get the best price for it. And there's real estate. There's, there's all this, this effort involved in turning the asset into cash to settle the loan. So there still will be some sort of um, interest or risk premium to account for that. But the main idea is saying that this person is going to be more likely to pay the interest and not default because there is a serious consequence if he doesn't do that. This debenture, in contrast, there is unsecured loan stock. And this is when you just give someone money and you say, if you don't pay, tough luck, for both parties, you can maybe try sue and go into liquidation and all that type of stuff. But the idea is I give you some money and you pay me the money um, back in installments uh, every month. And the whole idea is why they do this is because we say, well, this guy has a job or this company is making profit. We're seeing these income streams. They just need the liquidity now. There's a very low chance that they will default. Therefore, I'm prepared to make this loan. In South Africa, my home country, there was a company who was issuing quite a lot of unsecured loan um, to the general public, uh, African Bank. They were giving people loans, charging extremely high interest rates to account for the, the high risk that the person might default. But because the interest rates were so high, the people were defaulting and it caused massive problems and African Bank is not in a very good financial situation as of now. 
So that is unsecured loan stock. And when it comes to, to loan capital, just like I was talking about in the previous talk, is there's three things. There's risk, return, and marketability. So what we're going to see is that the higher the risk, it's more likely the higher return. So the unsecured loan stock has got a higher risk for the bank, so they're going to want to have a higher interest rate payment. But beyond risk and return, there's this third one called marketability. And marketability, when it comes to loans, again, it's the same idea. The more buyers, the more sellers in the market, the more marketable that asset is. So you want something to have a big secondary market in order to make sure that these loans can get traded. And marketability is improved by issuing large amounts of it because by issuing large, large amounts of it, and if there is that take up, you've got a lot of buyers in the market, which means, uh, remember, you need lots of buyers, lots of sellers. You've got one part of that deal done. Um, what is quite interesting when it comes to loans and the trading of all this type of stuff, new technology is currently being developed. A lot of stuff um, around the blockchain, uh, which is the infrastructure behind Bitcoin, can be used in these financial instruments in order to make the, the transferring of loans from one person to another person easier. And this blockchain technology is going to help hopefully increase marketability and if something is more marketable, investors will therefore be prepared to accept less return. And if they're accepting less return, then it means people can loan money at a cheaper rate, which is a good thing for the economy in the sense that it stimulates activity. Although if interest rates are too low, we might see people just borrowing money for reasons that maybe aren't the best economically. And it could cause mess, messes up with supply and demand, which is what we saw with the world recession. What was happening there, people were taking loan stocks, doing a little bit of magic in the background and, and selling them off. But by doing it at such a massive scale, because interest rates were so low, they altered the supply and demand of the housing market, which these things were then backed on. They fell down. The stocks that went from being secured to benches, they took on a junk status, mass selling, and it kind of caused a financial problem all around the world. But then we're getting into a little bit too, too much detail. So let me, let me wrap up this, uh, this talk by talking about um, a thing called a euro bond. A euro bond is when you issue a bond outside of your legal and tax jurisdiction. So the idea being that if I'm in South Africa and I issue a bond in America in order to tap into more um, investors, that is known as a euro bond. Um, the word euro just meaning that it's outside your country. I think it was generally done between the Americans and the Europeans, um, hence why it got that name euro, but it doesn't have to go through, through Europe. And euro bonds are normally unsecured loan stock, but when it comes to the issuing of loans, I mean, there's so many subtle features that you can tweak and you can customize to create your own financial instrument that you feel is best targeted towards your investors and is the best way to raise finance for your company. But yeah, that is just a brief introduction on loan capital. Uh, go through the material because you'll see I haven't spoken about stuff like par value or nominal value and coupons and redemptions and various um, options on when to pay it back and all that type of stuff, just because that is kind of boring <laughs> and it's best um, understood when you read that material and you figure it out for yourself rather than just hearing someone talk. If I had to talk about it, it would be a much, much longer video. So don't kid yourself, there is still a lot of material you need to go and find out for yourself, but I hope this has given you a good enough introduction to loan capital. And yeah, the next video is going to be on derivatives, and that's going to be chapter five. And that stuff gets quite exciting. So make sure you stay subscribed in order to get notified when I release that video. Thanks, guys, for listening. Cheers.